bet you're wondering how I ended up looking like this. Oh my gosh, I'm scared because I've literally never used this. Every trial comes with fails, and this is a huge one of them. So I'm going to wipe this off my face, redo everything, and show you guys how I do my makeup. Unfortunately for me, a big part of doing makeup is trying things, realizing they're a disaster, and not trying them again. <laughs> you know how life goes. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Will, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I do my makeup, of course, because for whatever reason, this is something that people have requested of me. They've seen my makeup and been like, how do you do it? I'm gonna show you how I do it. And obviously I'm not a professional. Obviously I just do what works for me and hope that it works for me. And makeup is a learning process. I have to figure out what works and what doesn't and just hope. But I have been doing makeup for several years now and I've I'd like to believe that I've only improved in doing my makeup. I mean, I did a makeup video a little over two years ago now, and I definitely think my makeup has improved since then, so that's a relief. So let's just dive right on into it. A lot of, so I also don't really have fancy, nice, expensive, I shouldn't say not nice, but I don't have really like expensive top brand makeup products. A lot of the stuff I use is the brand Wet n Wild, which I honestly find to be a really good brand for inexpensive makeup. At least it works really well with my skin. As far as I'm aware, there's a pretty good variety of shades of like the foundation and contour and stuff, so it can work for different people. And a lot of their products are also vegan and cruelty free, which I think is really cool as well. So the first step to my makeup routine is priming my face. And primer is a new step that I've recently just added like this past year because beforehand I never really realized like it was something that people really needed to use. I never really saw any importance in it. I feel like my ears stick out like a freaking elf. After like COVID and everything, I was genuinely convinced that the masks like stretched out my ears from like always having the like mask behind them. Let's move on to my first step, which is always my concealer. And I just like to start off by putting concealer in a few places that I feel like could use a little extra coverage. Um, and these are the two brands of concealer I usually use the most frequently. One in the lightest shades that they have available because I'm so pale. I'm so pale. We're just gonna leave that be and we're gonna move on to my foundation. I'm sorry if the lighting's a little weird. I have my ring light on me, but then I also have to have my makeup mirror off to the side here so I can see what I'm doing. I wish I had like exciting updates to talk about in my life, but I really don't. There's not much. People have been really rude lately at my job and I feel like a lot of it is like we just had Easter, like the holidays, a change of weather, it just brings out a change in people, although quite honestly they've always been jerks. Like we've just had a lot more people who have been complaining about like the prices or like the portioning size, which we really don't have any control over. And I used to be such a people pleaser, I'd be so apologetic to them in the long run working those types of jobs you have to sometimes remember like they chose to come here the prices is not my fault like obviously do what i can to be nice to them and help them out but i'm not responsible for them choosing to come into my establishment i'm not responsible for what they order it's not my fault that they're unhappy with their prices no one's forcing them to purchase it now i am going to go in with my concealer again and I'm going to apply some more concealer on the places that need concealing. I've been watching Little House on the Prairie a lot recently too. I don't know why. I just randomly like woke up one day and was like, I want to watch Little House on the Prairie again. 
And it's so crazy to see like the way things were run back then. I was really obsessed with The Little House on the Prairie when I was younger. And I think it stemmed from like reading The Little House on the Prairie books written by Laura Ingalls Wilder in like second or third grade. Why was I like eight years old and like watching a woman and like Mary's baby murdered in a fire, being killed in a fire? Well, if I didn't look like a ghost. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to attempt to bring some color back. We're just gonna stick to the stuff I know. Just try not to liquid contour because I'm like, that's what I see everyone using, but just because everyone uses it doesn't mean I have to also. When I was a kid, I also was traumatized by that show because I didn't understand the concept of like actors and like, I didn't understand like fake blood or like visual effects or anything. So I genuinely believe like when people died or got shot or got hurt, like they genuinely had to go through that in real life. So I thought when Alice Garvey died in that fire, I thought she legit did it. Like the woman who played her legit just done and died for her role. And I was like, that's commitment, that's dedication. And she's dead. And so I, well, I watched that scene as a kid genuinely thinking that poor woman lost her life for this role and I was kind of scared. Okay, now I'm calm from my nose and this requires quiet. Bam bam chicken and ham. There we go. I also just went through a huge phase in my life where I was obsessed with like prairie core and my grandma and my dad's side of the family actually like to sew so she had like hand sewn me like red dolls and then she'd like sew me matching outfits with my dolls. I know at one point I had this little bonnet that matched from my dresses. I always bought dresses that looked more like old fashioned or something that I would legitimately wear if I was like frolicking on a print. Now I am going to move on to the eyeshadow and today I'm going to be doing a more purple based look because I feel like it. By the way, look how cute my little brush holder is. It's a little cauldron. And I'm going to start with this one brush and I'm gonna go into a really light shade and we're gonna use that to sort of blend it in. I'm gonna start like on my eyebrow line where my eyebrows would be if I had them, but I don't. It's been literally almost like three years since I shaved off my eyebrows now. And let me tell y'all, I could not be happier because <laughs> these brows were genuinely like holding back my makeup for so long and it's such a stupid thing but I genuinely like it was one of the struggling points of my makeup and I just never knew what to do and nobody else knew what to do either like even when I had other people do my makeup for like occasions no one ever knew what to do with my eyebrows I went through phases where they were really thick I went through phases where they were really thin at one point I sh shaved a couple slits in them and one time I was just like you know what for my more like alternative style, it'd work if I didn't have eyebrows. You know, they grow back quickly, it's not that deep. I'm gonna just shave them off. And one day, I just grabbed a razor and I did just that. I shaved them right off. And I feel like my makeup has been so much better and so much easier since. I'm gonna go into this darker shade and I'm just gonna start blending. I'm going to go in with my Morphe palette now, and we're gonna go into some darker shades. I actually do like that, that's cute. All right, I'm not gonna go with that. I am going to take the concealer and sort of, I guess, prime my eyelids. And then I'm going to go in with this once again, and I'm gonna go in with the cute little sparkly shades and pack that into the inner corner. I like that. And that's all that really matters. Now is when we're also gonna go in with the eyeliner. And I use many different eyeliners. This is one that's dual sided, so it has like a little shape on one end and then the actual like precise line on the other. So this requires a lot of precision from me. God damn it, I forgot to put powder on. Half of my makeup is also just me forgetting things and then going back and doing them when it's probably too late. So we're gonna dip into my translucent powder, pack some under the eyes, right under the contour, 
I guess what some would call baking the face. Basically just in the places that there's the most um, product. Messed up a little bit, but that's all right. Now, how I usually do it is I start by, I just kind of draw it out and there we go. And then I kind of just fill it in going downwards. I don't know how to put it into words. And then I'm going to get this powder off my face. And then we're going to go under my eyes, which is the scariest part. It's getting to the point of the makeup where I'm really agitated, so it's hard to stay focused. That was bigger than I intended on it being. Fill it in and pray. That doesn't look good. I guess it looks better with both of them. So we're gonna just hope. I guess it'd help if the product actually worked. I'm gonna hope that this has some life left in it and doesn't disappoint me. Oh, okay. It's better than I thought it was. And there we are. That is my eyeliner. I only have a few steps left. The heavens, because one of which is my blush, which is really gonna help add color to my face. This was also from Target, so I'm just gonna dip into it. I like to put it on my nose and then right above my contour line. So I'm gonna start by aligning my lips. And then we're going to use my lipstick. We're just gonna accept that because I'm done. And that's it. 